As you all know, I am a survivor of gun violence, and I'm here today to thank you so much for your discussion and your passage this afternoon of the resolution that would have all guns sold on city property go through a background check. This is an absolutely wonderful first step. And first. overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, we know that citizens, Americans believe that the thing that gun, uh, gun show loophole should be closed. We also know that 33 citizens a day are killed by handguns. That this does right not include suicide. And I would just like a, a show of hands of all those that are in the audience that are also joining me and thanking you for what you did this afternoon. <laughs> At the national level, I think you would see the same thing. At the national level, Congress is now debating the Fixed Gun Check Act, and um, both of our senators are very much <coughs> leaning towards voting for this very common sense act, which means we all know right now that 40% of guns sold in this country do not go through any kind of background check. And we all know how enthused we would be about getting on an airplane if we saw that 40% of the passengers did not go through a metal detector. So that we all uh, can have a chance to engage in this debate. I'm reconvening the Tucson Weekly Public Forum that will be down in Library Square, irrespective of whether or not there's a court order uh, preventing it. People will be invited to come on a weekly basis and discuss the issues of importance that we're all concerned about. Uh, as usual, I will be packing a firearm and I am prepared to use it in defense uh, against violence that in the past has so often been visited upon me and other people who have spoken to me. And I want the police to understand, as, they, as I will communicate to them, they always have a right, whenever, in their capacity as law enforcement officers, to enter the perimeter, to disarm us, <coughs> stop our speech, whatever issues we have with the police as a consequence of that, we will take up in federal court as for you people up here, and Steve Kazanchek would be one, and Mr. Rankin over here, and Mr. Miranda over here, you don't have any law enforcement powers. To the extent any of you, or any group of anybody, tries to knock down our perimeter, overwhelm us like the people did in Armory Park 2006, April 10th, try to knock us down, jump on our backs, beat us, any of that, I won't hesitate to pull my firearm and blow their freaking heads off. My name is Renee Horton and I'm here tonight representing the Tucson and Southern Arizona chapter of the National Group One Million Moms for Gun Control. We're here to thank you for taking action to ban gun shows in Tucson, on gun sales on Tucson property, from the way I understand it, until the time that background checks are required of all purchasers. Requiring universal background checks is one of the four goals of the national organization One Million Moms for Gun Control. I would like to share an illustration of why this is so necessary. I'm a bus rider in addition to a member of One Million Moms for Gun Control. And yesterday, on my way to work, um, when I got to the Tano uh, Transit Center, I switched from an express bus to the Route 6. Route 6 is filled with um, a small group of people who go to the U of A, a lot of blue collar workers, and a number of people who go um, to visit their probation officers. And um, I was discussing the council's consideration of this proposal with another writer, and in the middle of our conversation, a man across the aisle who was in his mid-20s leaned over, and he said, yeah, the laws here are really loose. I've done time, and I can get a gun. Good evening, Madam Council. I am Keith M. Heineken, and let's just say, this is your constitution. Light it on fire. My dog tags on my keychain. Shove it down my throat. And every man in my family. It's for the children. I hear this propaganda constantly. $1.2 billion in the city long-term debt for the children. You've got me on the way of debacles. You've got a trolley to nowhere. It's for the children. You're selling them into slavery. On the national level, it's heinous. One and a half trillion dollars added every year under Obama. 
We want to play games with immigration. Sure, we're going to have, what, 40, 50 million eventually become American citizens in the next five years. Do you have any idea what that's going to do to your <coughs> job market? You think it's a joke. You think history is a joke. Background checks, yeah, sure, that's wonderful. Well, maybe you shouldn't look at all the crazy people, but maybe you ought to look at the 90% of all gun crimes committed by known gangbangers. Why do you get rid of that problem? Or are you just too scared? You're frightened little creatures. <laughs> You've got a Secretary of State who just resigned who said, what does it matter how they die? Well, why doesn't that apply now? Because it is the first four letters of the word propaganda. Prop. You need a prop? You've got them. Gabby Giffords will be there every time you need them. The propaganda oh, is oh, 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 I'm raising it to this level because it has to, because you've oh. taken it over to the far left. Beyond oh, belief. Oh, How many of you are actual combat veterans? Raise your hands. Two. Good. Are, two. One. Two. One. Two. Not two. But we're There's not a lot of women. Fifth or sixty of you. But it's not a war. We don't need semi-automatics, automatics. Right. I'm a <laughs> I come here tonight not to uh, represent my own views, but to represent uh, PDA Tucson. The, the Progressive Democrats of America chapter. Uh, we have about a thousand members, and our steering committee met today and uh, voted to unanimously endorse uh, your proposal to uh, have a very, very reasonable uh, resolution dealing with uh, city property and how affairs are conducted there. Um, and I want to thank you. This is a this is a real political lightning rod that uh, you have taken on, and I think that Councilman Kazatchik deserves special recognition <coughs> for moving swiftly and uh, decisively with this resolution, along with uh, Councilperson Uli. Um, I read the newspaper, the Arizona Star, every day, and it seems like every day there's a report of another gun homicide. And nationally, I think that. The people believe that gun violence has reached epidemic proportions. Uh, our law enforcement here in Tucson, uh, I imagine that vast majority of casualties uh, among the Tucson Police Department are uh, gun-related casualties. Uh, we have the additional expense of having to arm them uh, with more uh, and heavier firepower and defensive capabilities because of the proliferation of, uh, of more and more powerful uh, rifles, assault weapons in the hands of, of criminals in Tucson. Uh, we also have seen uh, the loss of prominent uh, public servants such as Congresswoman Giffords, this is uh, a loss for all of us when devoted public servants are taken away from us because of gun violence. But Lori McMahon, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm the promoter of the gun show at the Tucson Convention Center. My family started the show there in 1992. There has never been a firearm bought at the Tucson Convention Center gun show used in any mass shootings. And Mayor, City Council members, Mrs. Simon, Jared Lochner passed a background check and bought his firearms legally with a background check. All of the firearms used in mass shootings were obtained legally through a background check or stolen from someone who bought them with a background check. Private citizens at the Tucson Convention Center do not have access to the NICS system to perform a background check. Is the city prepared to put a system into place to perform these background checks for promoters like myself and the citizens to do these background checks? They can't. If it were to be enacted at a state level, we'd be more than happy to do that. I promote gun shows in California. 
where all firearm sales go through background checks and transfer dealers. The state spent several million dollars setting up this system. The transfer dealers all have a separate vault at their place of business where they hold the firearms for the background check to go through and then they deliver them to the buyer. This isn't really about background checks, I don't believe. The Tucson Convention Center gun show is the safest, best policed gun show, not only in this state, probably in several states. On the weekend of January 6th, the eve of the January 8th shooting anniversary, <coughs> members of Most Holy Trinity Catholic Church chose to stand in solidarity with mayors against illegal guns and demand a plan to ask President Obama and Congress to create an, a plan to end gun violence. 626 members of our, of our congregation signed a petition asking for common sense legislation that will, number one, require a criminal, criminal background check for every gun sold in America. Number two, ban assault weapons and high capacity ammunition magazines. And number three, make gun trafficking a federal crime with real penalty, penalties for straw purchasers. We want to thank the City Council for considering a policy aimed at restricting the amount of weapons sold in our city to unknown buyers. We are of the opinion that more guns are not the solution to gun violence. I would like to formally submit copies of our petitions to you as a message that 626 residents, Democrats, Republicans, young, old, hunters, even NRA members of our parish support this legislation. And I Mayor, Council, I'm going to call you out of church, Richard. So. <laughs> I received a phone call on the morning of January 8, 2011, of a my office at the University of Arizona, uh, trying desperately to find more information about the shooting that had taken place in Tucson. The call was from the University Medical Center, and the voice on the other end asked me if I had heard what had happened. I said yes. They said, well, the family of one of the victims is here and was asking for a priest. Can you come? And I said, yes, I can be there in five minutes. Where do I need to go? Diamond Children's Center. Children? Yes, she's only nine. My connection to the January 8th shootings in Tucson are peripheral and really an accident of availability and proximity. But that day, the image of a dead nine-year-old was burned into my head forever. My responsibilities on that morning were pastoral to bless the lifeless body of Christina, Christina Taylor Green and to offer what comfort I might to her parents and her brother. In the aftermath of January the 8th, like so many of the other clergy in the city, my responsibility remained pastoral to pray for victims, to pray for Jared Lochner, to console anger, to calm the voices that demanded revenge, to encourage peace. That was my job as a priest. But every day since then, my response to these kinds of senseless shootings has not been as a priest, but as a man, as flesh and blood, as a human being, a citizen of the United States of America. I've grown more and more angry, sadder and sadder at the reality of violence in our country. Each subsequent mass shooting, Seal Beach, Norcross, Oakland, Seattle, Aurora, Oak Creek, Minneapolis, Newtown, when I read that more than 1,200 people have died by gunshots in the streets of the United States of America in the six weeks since Newtown, I'm enraged, I'm saddened, I'm heartbroken. I don't know what the answers are to, the, to end gun violence as an issue in the United States in the 21st century, but I do know that the status quo is unacceptable and that to do nothing is criminal. I'm persuaded by the Harvard Public Health Studies linking gun violence in the U.S. to the prolifer proliferation of gun ownership. Uh, my intuition tells me that fewer guns and better regulations on those fewer guns will mean fewer gun deaths. Reasonable people accept common sense limitations on our personal liberties for the sake of, co of the common good, for the sake of public here, safety. Here. Yeah. 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 common of these being speed limits on our public streets. Fearful voices tell us that these limitations are tyrannical encroaches, encroachments upon liberty. These voices are unreasonable and often mendacious. I never want to anoint the body of 
a dead child again. Chances are I'll never be called on to do that again. But my friends, I'm not willing to leave that to chance anymore. Thank you so much for what you did today.